Hello everyone, welcome back to this video series on clinical SAS programming. So most of the users have been asking me to explain the concept of shift tables. So in this video, we will see the concept. In a later video, we will see the programming approach on how to derive or create a shift table. So here I have created some sample data for six subjects. So 1001 to 1006. And for these three subjects, so there are three visits, the baseline visit, month one visit and month two visits. Assume that these are the normal range indicators for hemoglobin parameter. So let's assume that we are working on lab data. So wherein we have the lab normal range indicator at each of the visits for each of the subjects. Say for example, for 1001 at baseline, the normal range indicator for hemoglobin was normal. And for subject 1002, it was low at baseline visit. And let's take another subject. So 1003, if we take a look at month two, the value was low. So similarly, we have data for uh, other subjects from like 1001 to 1006. So one thing to notice, like if we see for 1005, we do not have data collected at month one and month two. Similarly for 1006, we do not have data collected at baseline visit, but we have data at month one and month two. So for other subjects, we have data collected at all the possible or scheduled visits. So here on the right side, we have the basic layout of a shift table. So again, these layouts can vary from study to study, but I have taken one example. So here, if we try to understand the layout here, it says the first column is for month or the analysis visits, which are post baseline. So on the second column is indicating that the subjects baseline normal range indicator, which means so here the baseline value of low. And on the right hand side, all these columns are from post baseline. So if we now try to take one cell as an example, let me use a color. So the number that will be presented in this hello highlighted, hello highlighted cell will be like this. So the number of subjects who had a baseline low value and also low value at month one. So that number of subjects will be presented here. So let us take a second cell. So here if we see the number that would be presented in this second yellow highlighted cell will be the number of subjects who had a baseline value or normal range indicator of high and had a normal value at post baseline month one. That many number of subjects would be presented in this cell. So now let us try to fill the numbers for all the cells. So let me remove the color. So we'll try to identify or fill in the numbers for all these cells. So we'll also see what does this total mean and what does this missing mean when, try, when we try to populate the values. So first let us try to populate month one and low row counts. So now let us try to highlight this with a color. So let's use a lighter green. So here the basic concept is the number of subjects whose baseline is low and how their normal range indicated shifted at post baseline month one. So now let us try to identify the subjects who had their baseline normal range indicator as low. So now this is the baseline visit. So we need to identify the subjects who had their baseline normal range indicator as low. So we have subject 1002 has a value of low and subject 1005 has a value of low. So now the subjects whose baseline is low will be taken into account when we are trying to populate the numbers for these columns. So we have total two subjects whose baseline uh, result is low. So now when we try to populate the numbers for low to low, this means that the number of subjects whose baseline value was low and at month one also their value is low. So now we are interested in identifying uh, the shift for these two subjects whose baseline uh, normal range indicator is low. So for subject 1002 from low, so at month one also it remained low. So which means there is one subject at least now 
whose value is 1. So for the other subject at month 1 the value is missing. So for low to low there is one subject and for low to missing so we have one subject and for other subjects so as there are only two subjects for low to normal there are no subjects because out for these two subjects who has low at baseline remains uh, low at month uh, low at month one for subject 1002 but missing at one double for 1005 so we have accounted those two so for low to normal there are no subjects so we would put a value of zero so for low to high there are no subjects so we would put a value of zero and this total indicates the total number of subjects who had a baseline low and non-missing post baseline so total number of subjects whose baseline value was low and had a non-missing post baseline of at month one is this total. So total number of subjects whose baseline value is low and non-missing post baseline value at month one. So this that number would be put in this total column. Now let us try to identify the counts for normal row which means normal at baseline and low normal high or missing at month one so now let us use a different color so I have highlighted it in blue so let us try to identify the subjects who had their baseline visit value as normal so for 1001 we have the value as normal and also for 1004 we have the value as normal so only those subjects these two subjects would be accounted under the column counts for this row of normal so normal at baseline to low at post baseline do we have any subjects so for 1001 normal to normal so we have one subject and for normal to low there is one subject which is 1004 so as we are trying to populate the counts for normal to row so out of these two subjects there is one subject who had normal to low so we would put a value of one here which means one subject had normal at baseline and had low at post baseline month one so now the second thing is normal at baseline and normal at post baseline month one so normal to normal so this we have one subject which is one double zero one so we would put a value of one here so we had only total two subjects who had normal at baseline those two subjects were already accounted under normal to low and normal to normal so we do not have any subjects who are having normal at baseline and normal at month one a high at month one so we would put a value of zero and do we have any subjects whose baseline was normal but post baseline month one was missing we do not have so we would put a value of zero here so and what does this total indicate number of subjects who had their baseline normal range indicator as normal and non-missing post baseline month one value so we had two subjects with normal and both of them had non-missing post baseline or non-missing month one value so we would put a value of two here so now let us try to identify the counts for high row let's try to identify them with a different color so now high at baseline versus the low normal high or missing at month one so we'll try to highlight that so now we have 1003 only one subject had high at baseline and now let's see how this subject shifted at month one so this subject shifted from high to normal at month one so high to normal we would get a value of one here so and do we have any subjects who shifted from high to low at month one no so it would be zero and high to high we do not have any such cases zero and high to missing there are no such cases so the value would be zero and then high to total number of subjects whose baseline was high and non missing month one value so there was only one subject who had baseline high and that subject had non missing month one value so that would become one here so now we'll come back to the total in a while so let us now try to identify the missing row counts so let's use a different color here so for missing we have 
subject 1006 has a missing value at so let's use a different color so as this is close to white so we have one subject whose baseline value was missing so baseline missing and post baseline low normal high or total or missing we need to count that so missing to low so do we have any subjects so there is only one subject with missing so we that subject already has like normal at month one so this subject would be accounted under missing to normal we would populate it with a value of one and so for the other things so missing to low there are no subjects missing to high there are no subjects so missing to missing there are no subjects so we'll populate it with zero and missing to total so number of subjects who had their baseline value as missing but non missing post baseline value so we have one subject so at total we would get value of one so how does this total row values will be added up so this total is nothing but the values combined above it so two two zero total is four and this one will become one now let's try to do the same thing for month two now low at baseline for month two so we had two subjects with low at baseline so low to normal there is one subject and low to missing there is one subject so low to normal there is one subject so we are now looking at month two so low to normal one and low to missing one so this will become the other low to normal would sorry low to normal is one so low to low will be zero and low to high will be zero and total would be one So now let's try to identify the normal at baseline versus the counts of low normal high at month two. So normal we have used blue color. So we had normal two subjects and normal to normal there is one subject and normal to high there is one subject. Normal to normal one subject and normal to high there is one subject. So normal to low there would be zero subjects. And the total would be so it would be equivalent to the addition of these two so it would become two so and missing there were no subjects it would be zero and high at baseline versus low normal high at post baseline so we had one subject with a value of high at baseline at month two that subject shifted to low so high to low there would be one subject and in other cases high to low high to normal it would be zero high to high it would be zero total would be one and high to missing there were no subjects so we would populate it with a value of zero so missing at baseline versus the shift missing to normal there is one subject so missing to low there are no subjects so it would be zero miss missing to high there are no subjects so it would be zero so missing to total there is one subject and missing to missing there are no subjects it would be zero and again total row counts would be the sum of these three so one two one four and this would be one so this is how we try to identify the counts for the individual cells of a shift table so hope you got a, a quick understanding on how these numbers would be presented and the next thing is that how we calculate the percentages so there can be different ways in which a percentages can be asked to be calculated in shift tables the first thing is the total number of subjects available in a particular treatment let's assume that all of these subjects are belonging to the same treatment so in that case so we have a number six so we would be using a value of six as denominator if that is the case so as discussed the first option for denominator could be our capital n which is nothing but the number of subjects in that treatment 
and the second option that can be used as denominator is the total number of subjects who had a particular rows like this will be equivalent to the uh, total column count on a particular row so in this case so it will be one will be for low the total column count is one so this may be asked to be used as denominator so the second option for denominator could be the total column count on a row so this may be used as a denominator and the third option that may be used as denominator is the total row to total column count so total count on total row so this may become so if it is capital n so we'll have to count the total number of subjects on that particular visit in that treatment and use that as denominator and if we are being asked to use the total column count on a particular row as denominator we would use these individual row counts for that particular rows uh, for denominator and the third option could be total row to total column count so this specific count could be asked as to, used as denominator for all these cells so in that case so the final total to total will become 100 percentage so again similarly there can be some other alternate definitions of denominators on how the percentages have to be calculated but based on the definition given in the shell or the statistical analysis plan we would be calculating the percentages so three regularly used ones are either capital n or total column count on a particular row or total count on total row hope you got a quick understanding of the shift table concept on this short video thank you for watching and keep learning